YouTube as it going the goat house is back with the Carolina Panthers video we have a playlist on the channel with all the teams that we have done over halfway through we will get to every NFL team but going over a, a preview what to watch players to watch and a lot more here for the Carolina Panthers uh, we had a comment on the last video from e money said when we do the Panthers video title should be they can't be any worse can they so I thought that was pretty funny that was good as of now, that's what I'm going to go with You know, when I upload it here. But, uh, yeah, for the Panthers, uh, what to expect. You know, I, the, the bet, they're the betting favorites to be the worst team in football, if that makes sense. And I don't know if I really agree with that. I don't know if they're going to go back-to-back -back years being the worst team in football. I like some of the things they did this offseason. We're going to discuss it. Uh, of course, they're still a... They're a work in progress. There's going to be some growing pain still. But, yeah, the, so the big question is, can they step up? Uh, did, does the offense get any better with Dave Canales? The additions, do, does it affect Bryce Young in a good way? Uh, does he step up? Did the defense take a hit? We'll discuss these things in this video. A lot of offensive topics here in this video. Number three for what to watch. Uh, yeah, if you were with us during the coaching hire process, I always rank in grade the coaching hires, and I love my number one, my number one hire of the offseason, Dave Canales. I think it's an absolute perfect fit for this Panthers team for Bryce Young but for the team in general the offense in general I love it I can also very much impressed me last year at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and he's out to prove something too he had a little bit of bad taste in his mouth uh, after leaving Seattle without a bigger job and then he goes to Tampa and he does a very good job obviously what he did with Baker you know Baker everyone was kind of thrown in the towel with Baker and the Bucks, believe it or not were more of a passing offense they were number 12 in the league in passing offense he kind of revived Baker Mayfield's career um, you know they did a really good job uh, you know they didn't run the ball a ton but when they did I thought it was pretty explosive I thought the main thing is I thought he was very unpredictable I thought he did a really good job you can see he prepared his players you can see he's a smart guy when you know in, in just the whole preparation process and I thought he was a fantastic play caller like I said it's the biggest thing with play callers is don't be predictable. Be un as unpredictable as you can. And easier said than done sometimes because you have to have the right pieces. You can't be one-dimensional. You don't want to be one-dimensional. But I thought he did a hell of a job. And for Bryce Young, Bryce Young struggled last year. It's the bottom line. He struggled last year. He was underwhelming. The good news is he was just a rookie. The coaching staff wasn't great. The offensive line wasn't great. The weapons weren't great. That's good news because... Now he's going to have a pretty good group, and mainly, I, I think, with Canales, you know, the head coach, I think, and his, the offensive-minded head coach. I think it's the biggest thing here. So, could he do something like he did with Baker Mayfield? I don't see why not. I think similar in, in terms of skill sets, Bryce Young and size, I guess, Bryce Young and Baker Mayfield. Um, you know, and, and I, I, you know, a big thing here, like not just Bryce Young, but the offense, and a big reason why is. I mean, they've added receivers. They have weapons uh, on this team now. They improve the offensive line. Maybe it's somewhat similar to the Buccaneers' offensive line. Uh, you know how how Canales wants it, how it's built. But man, I, more of a passing team Canales' offense was last year with the Buccaneers, and I, I that's great for Bryce Young. Again, what he did with Baker Mayfield, that's great. He has weapons, but they got a pretty good running group, I think, as well. And they added mainly to the interior offensive line. So the biggest strength of that offensive line is run blocking they should be much improved in terms of pass protection but so he comes in and it, it's it's a i think it kind of leaves a little bit of mystery for opposing teams when game planning for canales offense i think it's kind of going to be his you know his offense in tampa with a little bit new of a take on it i think we could see more running the football and teams are going to be wondering it's like man that bucks team they threw the ball a lot. Like, you know, they didn't run a ton, but they were really sneaky with it. They got Rashad White the ball out of the backfield of the passing game as well. So they were really good with that. Is it going to be the same thing? Uh, but they got all these running backs, and they made it a point to add these guards to improve the interior run blocking, interior pass protection as, as well. But So I, I think it's going to play mind games with opposing teams. It's like, what do we expect here? They're actually a little more balanced than you think. You know, improved offense line, improved weapons. Bryce Bryce Young should step up, kind of by default. Just with Dave Canales is the big addition for Bryce Young, not Deontay Johnson. Not and those are big additions. Not Xavier Leggett, Jonathan Brooks. The guards, the guards are pretty big. The interior, quickest trip to the quarterbacks, the interior. So a lot of times when Bryce Young was pressured instantly, that interior and he's 
kind of had an issue like which way does he roll out uh, you know, turning his body a little bit too many times. So some things like that were on him, but it started with that quick interior pressure. So those guards are there for that as well. But again, they're a lot more balanced than you think. And in with Canales' offense, I think it's going to keep teams guessing, if that makes sense there. So uh, I do love the fit for several reasons. It should be a lot of fun. Number two, kind of going sticking with the offense here. I love the offensive versatility and how the rotation has potential to you know has potential like what it could be, you know looking at these receivers. You think the number one receiver is Deontay Johnson? What has Deontay Johnson been so far in his career? A pretty good receiver, but he's played a lot in the slot, but he's also played outside. I thought he's been done his best work kind of coming from the slot over the middle of the field just because it's a little easier, but he has done some work on the outside along the sideline as well. So the Panthers want to use him on the outside mainly, but I like his versatility. How you, can, you can have him outside in. Xavier Leggett, mainly going to be on the outside, but he can move around. He can be a gadget guy. He can give him the ball underneath, but he's pretty good at contested catches down the field as well. Really good after the catch. Adam Thielen's mainly a slot receiver. Um, you have Jonathan Mingo, who I liked a lot out of Ole Miss, but he was pretty raw because he didn't do a ton at Ole Miss. Because, I mean, they used him as like a wing back sometimes, um, you know, to block, almost like a tight end, and they put him in the slot a ton. Um, you know, so it, you, but you could see the athleticism, the talent. It's just a matter of getting him involved more and getting him to learn and actual like the actual receiver position more in the NFL. So it kind of made sense that he was a little quiet last year. He did have some moments that I didn't love, like I didn't expect to see. Uh, I do think he's better. I, I think he's kind of the future Adam Thielen. I do think he's better in the slot. I, I don't like. I don't love him along the sideline. Not that he can't do anything there, but he is a unique type of player that again can block and do different things so you have him in the rotation so you have a lot of these versatile pieces again Johnson's versatile because he can play outside and hand he can do both and he's a very good receiver Leggett's versatile just the different play styles the different ways you get him the ball and then Mingo's a totally different type of player what he can do like what he did at Ole Miss uh, and then you have a, a mixture of tight ends obviously uh, you, you know they've they've they added, uh, you know, Sanders from Texas through the draft. Um, Tommy Tremble, I'm surprised. He's a little sneaky, but I'm surprised he hasn't been a little further along. But he's a weapon as well. Um, you know, so they have numbers there. And they have that running back group. Uh, you know, Hubbard's been underrated, been very good. I love Jonathan Brooks. Jonathan Brooks was easily my number one running back in the draft. It was just coming off an injury. But he's got that home run ability. He can catch the ball out of the backfield and just go. So you have so many different looks that that you can give to really again again kind of just throwing teams off i that is a big thing people don't talk about it enough that is a huge thing in football it kind of goes into the game plan make teams game make defenses game plan process tricky and you you know the the pre snap process as well make that tricky make teams you want to keep them guessing you want to be unpredictable and i think that's what dave canales brings and i actually do think they have the personnel to do that now. What people really aren't talking about. I think most of the world is hyped that, you know, they think Canales is good. This is good. I don't think there's anyone out there saying, yeah, that was a bad hire. He's not going to be good for Bryce Young in this offense. I think everyone thinks it. I think some of us maybe a little higher on it. Like, I'm super high on that hire. But uh, I, I, what I, where, I, where I think people kind of forget or don't think is again they, they not people know they they added pieces for offense but think about it like i'm talking like even deeper the versatility the different ways you can line up the different ways you can use these guys like these guys i'd imagine deontay johnson for an example is on the field a lot right but there's going to be times where it's him and leggett an extra tight end sanders is basically a big receiver right now that, that's uh, that's really what he is. Uh, he's going to have to develop into more, but he's a weapon as a receiver. So um, in the red zone, in the open field, you can line him up in different spots. So again, you have so many varieties of looks where you probably got good guys on the field and on the bench, and then you can have more of them in at the same time, and you have these different running backs. And there's it almost feels like endless opportunities endless looks and that's a scary thing for opposing defenses i said it multiple times it's that's a bigger thing than you think so they could be very sneaky for those reasons right there uh and i think the biggest thing we're all watching for is yeah the offense like we just been you know i've been rambling about for a while here the offense took a big step up at least it should take a big step up the the protection the biggest thing is the coach in my opinion the system in the coaching when it comes to the game plan, 
you know, everything. That is the biggest improvement. You added to the running back room. You added to the receiver room a lot. You added to the tight end room in the draft. Big thing, the guards. You added to the offensive line group there. Um, you know, so they obviously on paper, they have stepped up. Bryce Young should step up. It's just a question of how much will he step up. But the offense should be better. Defensively, they they on paper, they actually do take a little bit of a step down. Uh, they lose Brian Burns, big time player, obviously. They actually lost their top three leaders in sacks, believe it or not. Uh, that it could be a little misleading. I think if you say that for most teams, it's like, oh my God, that is brutal. I don't know if it's as brutal. I think losing Brian Burns is pretty big, bigger than what the stats show. He was more of an impact than what the stats show. Um, but Frankie Lavu was a big blitzer. I thought that was a big loss. I'm surprised they didn't get him back, but usually in Evero's defense, uh, linebacker, they don't typically need the value linebacker big time. And Josie Jewell actually played under him. So it was a good fit. Um, and I like Trevor Wallace from the draft. He's more of an upside guy. They do have Shaq Thompson, but Lavu's pretty big. And then Gross Matos was the third, so that's not really a big one. But they did lose their top three sack leaders. Clowney is he is up and down career. Is he as good as he was in Baltimore? I I don't think he will be. I, I think chances are he won't be as good. But he he's a guy, right? And then DJ Wanham's been a little underrated. They have some other pieces as well. But Edge. The production after the quarterback off the edge and in unique ways took a little bit of a hit. So defense takes a step down, but offense takes a big step up. So why this is a big question? It will is that the case? It looks like it'll be the case. Is it worth it? I like on paper and in theory right now. I want to say it's definitely worth it. I would take a little bit of a hit on defense. The, the knock is because I'm a, I'm a big believer for offense. Most important is. It's quarterback play for sure, and I think play calling and, and offensive line are right there for next. But defense, I actually think it's defensive play calling, defensive coaching, and then and then typically it's pass rush, typically off the edge. So they're lacking there. But Evero is a really good. They're not lacking in that first part. Really good defensive coach. So I think this defense, uh, depending on durability, uh, Horn, uh, Clowney, guys like that. But I think the defense could be. It was really good last year, though. They kept them in games, even though the offense couldn't do it. The defense was better than you think last year. but So it, it does kind of suck that you had to kind of suffer on one side to make other side better. But again, in theory right now, I, I would rather have it this way because I think the defense, because it's going to be well coached, they still got some really good players led by Derek Brown. The defense should be okay. And the offense, I really think, takes a major step up. So again... This way seems like it should it should be better, but we're all eyes on that. It is well, I mean, what if the offense took a major major step up, but the defense took a major? I don't think it'll be this way, but the defense took a major step back. It's like you're gonna be going, God, why couldn't we have last year's defense with this offense? It's gonna it's gonna hurt a little bit if that's the case. So very curious to see how that goes. We will see. Uh, players to watch. The first time I have an offensive lineman on this list. I haven't really been doing offensive lineman on the players to watch list because I do think it's mainly a unit. You're, you're typically not always as good as your unit, but I think Iguanu is pretty intriguing because he's been a little disappointing so far. I actually thought he was better as rookie year than last year. I, I think it might be a fact. Um, but and he's got a lot of upside. We know he's a good run blocker, so this team should be able to run the football. And kind of going back into it, like Canales didn't really run the ball a ton. Does he do it more here? Uh, he really can throw teams off with that. But iguanu has got to step up as a pass protector. But why he's on here is they really revamped this offensive line. The rest of the offensive line should be pretty damn solid, really. Uh, they have good players everywhere. They added Damian Lewis, Robert Hunt. I should say Robert Hunt and Damian Lewis to the guard. Like those are good guards. Hunt, I think, has a lot of upside, all the potential in the world. I, I loved him coming out of Louisiana. Um, and Taylor Moulton's a very solid right tackle. Like, he could play a little bit better, but, I mean, he's a very, very solid right tackle. So it's really on Iguanu, which is an important piece at left tackle, uh, you know, to, to step up because this unit has some really good potential here. So definitely an offensive lineman to watch. Uh, we touched on a little bit uh, on why Deontay Johnson's up here, but he's uh, he's going to be their best receiver. It's a, I love that trade. It's an A-plus trade for them, a steal. They got a lot better. Really great for Bryce Young. I mean, it's a, a really good addition. Uh, he's got to have a little more effort. That's one thing. We knew that based on what we saw last year with the Steelers. But the main reason he's on here is, again, he's over his career, he's played in the slot and outside. He's done both. He's done both pretty damn well. Maybe a little bit more damage from the slot. And the Panthers want to play him outside. I actually think he's probably going to play. He's going to play both. But I think he's going to play on the outside a, a bit more 
than the inside, you know, compared to the pass. But he's gonna do both. So how does he how does he do with that role? How does he you know, so it's it's some there's some pressure on the guy. Uh with with the effort thing, people doubting him. They got traded for next to nothing. Um and he's gonna have a slightly different role. Nothing that he's not used to though. Um he's still a receiver at the end of the day. He's going to go out there and run some solid routes and make some good plays. Got to catch the ball consistently. So I think he's going to be good. I think it was a good addition, but maybe a little pressure on this guy. So I'm very curious to how he is with a new team and a little, a little bit different of a role. And then number one, you, you have to go with Bryce Young. You absolutely have to. Uh, he was bad. He was awful last year. He really was. And that's just the end of it. I know I'm getting some arguments with you, with you guys on Twitter, or Panthers fans about it. Um, and I didn't have any takes about Bryce Young for the future, really. I think I think Dave Canales is perfect for him. I think he takes a big step up. He has to take a big step up this year. But reality was last year, and now people wanted to make excuses. And I know the offensive line was bad. The weapons were bad. I'm not saying otherwise. But a lot of the time, there was some fault that was definitely Bryce Young's. You know, it was Bryce Young's fault quite a bit. He was not handling pressure well. He was – he would um, – you know, turn and run or roll out the wrong way at times, you know, turn his back to the, to the pressure too often, run backwards and then make some, and there wasn't, it wasn't uh, a crazy amount of bad throws. I think he was just kind of putting himself and of course the offense line, the receivers, they were kind of putting themselves in bad situations, but reality was he was very underwhelming last year. He was bad. The weapons could have been better, but he could have been a lot better, but this year is a totally different year. Again, I love Canales for him. I said it a million times. The weapons are better. Offensive line's better. He's got to play well. He's got to play better. Does he need to be great? Absolutely not. does not need to be great yet. Uh, We don't want to put that. I like the situation Bryce Young's in. People are doubting him right now. People are doubting him. Like, there's not. I don't like when fans, like, put so much expectations on guys. You know, we're, 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 and I think that Bryce Young had that going into last year. And, and it's just, it's not fair, really. It's not fair for that player, be, you know, because you don't need him to be that player yet. Like he's only on year two. So, uh, but I think it's in a, a good, it's a good situation, but there is some pressure at the same time. There is like, he has to be better, but I, I he's, I think he'll be better. Um, but overall I like the situation because I, I think, uh, People are doubting him. People don't really have these big expectations. They know he needs to be better. They know it needs to happen now. But no one's saying he needs to be this like this good or throw X amount of touchdowns or have this touchdown interception ratio. No one's really saying that right now. So I think that's a good thing. But absolutely has to play better. I like his situation. I, I think he's got the perfect coach. I really, I really do. I really do. Like, is there are there better coaches out there in the NFL? Of course. But for this cycle, I, I think it was absolutely perfect. I, I that could backfire on me. Could I look like an idiot? You know, could Canales just completely shit the bed? I suppose. I don't see it. But I, I'm really confident with that hire, even if it's not perfect right away. I just don't want people to put those expectations on Canales, on Bryce Young, on this team quite yet. But I do, I do think they're sneaky. I do like where they're heading here. Games to watch. I like the Raiders in Week Three in in Vegas. Anything can happen in Week Three, but that's kind of you want to get out. Both these teams want to get out of. The, obviously, it sounds stupid. You want to get out of every game with the win, but uh, I think it's big here in Week Three as you know you're starting to kind of get going with the, with the season. First couple weeks, like anything goes. Um, so I think they'll be pretty big, but also I think the teams are built pretty similar. I think they're pretty similar actually. Like quarterbacks are question. They're both young quarterbacks, depending on who starts for the Raiders, but still quarterbacks. They're not going to win because solely because, and there could be games because of it, but solely because quarterback play every week. Um, they have, you know, in a young improving offensive line. They have receivers. Both teams now they have weapons um, uh, on defense. They're both are actually a little lacking on paper, but they both have star players. You know, Max Crosby, Christian Wilkins, and you have Derek Brown and J.C. Horn. I think is a star player if he's healthy. Just a big if there. Um, and they they're main they're not great on paper. Players just kind of just step up. They have some star players, and they're both very well coached on defense. So I think they're kind of built the same. So I thought it was an interesting game uh, at Commanders in Week Seven. Love that one as the. Season starts starts to kind of kick into gear. Pretty similar teams. Bryce Young versus Jaden. Bryce Young versus Jaden Daniels. Pretty mobile quarterbacks like to roll out and sling it. Uh, SEC guys, both young. 
Uh, both teams have new coaches. Uh, the Commanders also got some Panthers guys. They got Frankie LeVu and Jeremy Chin. So that makes it interesting as well. Two teams that people kind of rank, I suppose, are put in the same tier. So these would be big games here. Must win games for these teams here in week seven. And I like week 10. Uh, because it's the week before the bye week. So head into the bye week, you know, a winnable game, Giants versus Panthers. People put people put those teams in the same tier, I suppose, as well, at least most people. Um, so both those teams want to get out there with the win, get in the bye week for the Panthers, and uh, have some good momentum if they're trying to be sneaky down that stretch. Um, you know, so those are the games that stand out. Obviously, the divisional games as well. Um uh, the Bucks games will be pretty big because uh, Canal is coming from there, so for obvious reasons. So, uh, yeah, definitely uh, some games to watch. Some fans takes uh, from Renzo. Uh, will Bryce Young live up to Alabama days with better weapons and a better old line? I, I again, I think he steps up. I don't think he'll be that Alabama Bryce Young, at least not you know quite yet. I do think he'll be a lot better. Uh, Say it over and over again. Yeah, better weapons, better offensive line. Number one thing is that coach. I, I really think so. Will and here he is. Will Canellis get the most out of Bryce Young as he did with Baker? Uh, I I could see it. Like somewhat similar to Baker, he could have that Baker like step up, that breakout. I really think so. Uh, how will the defense fare without Brian Burns? Yeah, it's tough without Burns. Burns was more of an impact. Um, <clears throat> it'll be tough without him, I think, because he more of an impact than the stats show. Like it felt like he was in, uh, getting pressure on a lot of plays, way more than the sack stats show. Um, not necessarily, I mean, yeah, the name, you're missing that guy, that big-time player, but I think they mainly miss, like if they got a replacement, even if it wasn't like as good of a guy, and people will say clowny, I think they're a lot different. Then maybe it, they wouldn't miss him as much, but I do think they'll miss him off the edge. The ed, edge group, I mean, Wanham was a backup for the Vikings, and I thought he was a very productive high-motor guy when he was in. So maybe, you know, maybe Clowney's just hit his stride last year, like got going last year, and he's going to continue, you know. So you never know. It's not no guarantee, but I do think they'll they'll be missing guys off the edge, and and it's not like, you know, somebody's going to have to step up as like a blitzer, you know, and LeVu was kind of that guy, Um Thompson could be that guy if he's healthy, I suppose. But uh, answering out Bryce Young in the new Canales offense. Yeah, we kind of touched on that. Improvement along the offensive line. Yeah, just on does Equanu step up because the rest looks pretty good. I like the guards. I like Moten. I'm not really worried about the center position. Offensive synergy with so many new elements arriving this offseason. Yeah, I guess the thing, like I said, it could throw off other teams because it's a totally new look and there's they're very versatile. They can give they can give totally different looks, but uh, it's something you do have to be prepared for. These players have to be prepared. It's, it's. I think it's going to be. I don't know how com complex, but I, I don't think it's going to be straightforward stuff. So will it be? The, will there be a learning curve? I guess that's a good point. Like, it, like the synergy is it going to be there right away? I definitely think it'll be there as the year goes on. Xavier Leggett usage. Yeah, I guess I'm. Uh, well, I know they're they're going to give him the ball in different ways. They're going to try to. They're going to give him the ball behind the line of scrimmage. Uh, could they hand the ball back? Yeah, the same thing. They can hand the ball off to him. Uh, and they'll try to give him the ball down the field as well. Uh, yeah, but I am—he is an interesting prospect. He kind of came out of nowhere last year. wasn't supposed to be that good, but it was very good. Um, he doesn't—he's speedy, but maybe you'd like for him to run routes a little bit better, have more of an NFL route tree, and separate a little bit better. So in a way, he's weird because you could say he's raw because of that. Like he just got going this year, needs to develop more of an NFL route tree. So you could say he's raw, like his best football is ahead of him. But you also could say he's a plug-and-play guy because he's a guy that you just kind of just get the ball to. Like, you just give him a screen pass, let him go, you know. So in that sense, it's like pro-ready. So, yeah, curious the usage. Like, how are they, do they get him right in there? Uh, are they – it, 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 may, it this creates a lot more questions because are they mainly two receivers out there and is it mainly Deontay Johnson, Adam Thielen, and they're working in Leggett and they're working in Mingo? Um, do they have a ton of reps with three receivers out there? And is that third receiver Leggett or Thielen, whoever you want to say, two and three? Or um, does Leggett start off? I wouldn't imagine he starts off as a receiver four. But it, there are ways that, that make him a little raw in terms of an NFL receiver. So it's a good question. It's very, very curious on the usage right out the gate. Brooks Hubbard share. And they do have Sanders. He wasn't good last year, but uh, I, it's still a back that can play. Um yeah, how's the share? How, Brooks, he was coming off an injury. He's super young still. You're not desperate to get him in there and get him mileage. You don't really need to do that. He's their best back. I, if he's fully healthy, I think he's their best back. I think the only knock, the only argument against that 
is Hubbard and Sanders are probably specifically breaking tackles, shedding tackles. They're going to be better at the NFL level right away than Brooks. Brooks didn't do a ton of that. He slipped a lot of tackles. He he maneuvered around them, which is great. Um, but he could put on a you know recover a little bit more from the injury and put on a little bit more uh, muscle, a little bit more mass. Um, not that he's really lacking that, but he could do that. You know, so the, I actually I'm I love Brooks home run guy. Like if he was fully healthy, uh, he could have been a late first round guy. If he was there was no injury, fully healthy, he's like that talented. Like he sees the hole, he hits it, he goes, and he's really good after the hole with his vision and his. Um, in, in his moves and his in his quickness and his speed and he has pass catching upside, um, so he's really good. So I'm dying to see him in this offense and a lot. But I'm gonna pump the brakes. I don't really want them to go crazy with him, especially right away. Um, there's no point to putting a ton of mileage on him yet. So I think though what I just said, I think they'll follow that. Um, but we'll see. It's a very interesting question. How big of a step down would the defense take? Yeah, we kind of talked talked about lost stars, but brought in a few quality starters. Yeah, I do think people don't realize coaching. Um, I mean, look at what Spagnola did with the Chiefs. I think coaching, and they do have Chris Jones out there. So you do have that, but they have Derek Brown. You know, they have J.C. Horn if he's healthy. Um, coaching is a big thing. Evero's a really good coach. He brought in some familiar faces too. Some guys that he coached very well in, in L.A. Uh, Nick Scott actually kind of took off after the Evero era, uh, but it's the same same scheme. A lot of cover four. Um, so Scott will fit that Jordan Fuller. Jordan Fuller actually played his best ball when Evero was there. We thought he could be a future, like a really good player and he's been decent, but, um, so that's good. So they do have some players, some under the radar players that just really fit. They got, they got guys that fit this defense. I'm not worried about that at all. I like Evero's defense. They got guys that fit. It'll be run well. It, the edge is the big thing off the edge, the production off the edge. Um, you know, so that's big JC horn health concern, stability could provide if he plays enough, uh, uh, and then Trevin Wallace, yeah, Horn. Every time I watch Horn play, I'm like, man, it's the same thing I thought of at college. I'm like, but at the NFL level, I'm like, this, this, like this guy, like if we can see this every week, like he is maybe the best corner in football. I've said that before. I'm saying it again. Like his talent wise, I'm not gonna call him the best corner in football. We can't do that. But talent wise, skill wise, if he's on the field, he's hasn't been. But if he's on the field every week, like might very well could be the best corner top five at least in football but it's very hard to trust him to stay healthy at this point it is very very hard i hate to say that. i i hope i cornerback position is like my favorite in football i i want to see this guy out there i want to see him healthy uh because i know what he could be so i just I, in my opinion like if it's me like i just i don't fully trust him to stay healthy and that's a worry for, i guess that's another worry for the panthers defense is the cornerback depth is super lacking right now. So that could be a tough part. Trevor Wallace, I loved. If you guys watched us during the draft process, I was probably as high or higher on Trevor Wallace than anybody out there, uh, but mainly because of his upside. It's a raw prospect. He has the traits you look for, the linebacker position. He has super, super flashy plays, but he has some off plays as well. I think it's a perfect situation. Young team that it's an upside team. It's a fit. It's a match. But also, they have starters right now. They have Josie Jewell. And they, and they have Shaq Thompson. So I don't think we'll see a ton of Trevor Wallace. I don't really want, I want to see Trevor Wallace, but right, I don't, not kind of like the Brooks situation. I don't want to see a ton of Trevor, Trevor Wallace yet. I think his time is in the future. They got better pro ready linebackers right now. I think it's a really good fit. I like the draft pick. Um, Cam Sullivan, very different defense. Will all these additions mesh well? I wouldn't call it a very different deep. I, I see the way he means it. It's just like they lost a lot of guys and they added. Uh, different guys, you know, so it looks very different. Um, so that's what he means. So in that way, he's right. Uh, but the coaching is the same. The scheme is the same. And again, the positive is they brought guys in that can really fit that scheme. Josie Joel played under Evro in Denver. Jordan Fuller with the Rams. Nick Scott plays that same scheme with the Rams. Um, I, I think uh, uh, Dane Jackson could fit that scheme. He played a lot of Cover two, and they're going to run more cover four, but he, he, he can handle that side of the field. Co cover two in the NFL, corners are covering deeper than just the flat. You got a lot of responsibility. I think his job gets e it gets easier. Cover two is pretty challenging for corners in the NFL. Cover two before the NFL is probably one of the easiest things because all they ask you to do is cover in the flat. Um, but it's really hard in the NFL uh, because they ask you to do a lot more. They, they ask you to... 
you know, keep covering the guy, even if he's outside your, the receiver down the sideline, even if he's outside your zone, unless somebody sneaks into your zone, they really think they're getting the ball. You also need to be physical. They like their, their corners in the NFL to be able to press cover too. So very difficult. Um, so I think Dane Jackson's job actually gets easier in this cover four scheme and he's familiar with cover too. So they might be able to mix that in. So, um, so again, starters look pretty good in terms of corner, but the depth is that where I was at? Yeah, the depth could, they could be lacking. Um, but yeah, scheme wise, about the same. Uh, but they did lose some players. So does it? Yeah, does it all kind of come together? DJ Wanham now a starter, like we talked about. Uh, does it come together? Overhaul at guard. Can they keep Bryce uh, clean? It should definitely be a lot better. It's a big question, though. Is it better? Is it how much better is it last year? How how good is Bryce Young against pressure this year? Sophomore Bryce, not all problems were O line last year. It's a great point because uh, it was receiver as well, and they've added there, and it was a lot on Bryce Young as well, and there was a lot on the coaching as well. Um, so a lot of things to watch, like how much different it is in last year. Some things will probably be a lot different. Some things could be the same. I think a lot of people here are probably hoping a lot different. Very hard schedule after, uh, yeah, they got the after the bye, they got the Chiefs. That yeah, I, I it's kind of hit me now after you said that Chiefs right after the bye, um, and the Falcons are a much better team now too. Like with Kirk Cousins, but even if Kirk Cousins out, Mike Pe- Michael Penix in there, I think they're a much better team than they were last year. Um, not that I think Cousins will be out, but um, yeah, they got man, they got the NFC East, couple teams in there. This is a team built for big games yet. I think it can be sneaky. Man, I wish they were playing. I kind of wish they were playing those teams right in the beginning. Some of those teams, at least. like the. I wish their harder part was in the beginning. That's tough, though, because if you start off like 0 oh, and whatever or like 2 and whatever, like it kind of kills the momentum for your season and that kind of calls it. It's hard to come back. But I just for the first few games, like first three games, I wish some of the, like those juggernaut teams were in there um, because – Anything goes. Anything can happen the first few games, and the Panthers could be really sneaky with the new look, and so they could have they could have snuck off some wins um, early in the year against those teams. So yeah, it's a really good point. Something I kind of saw but didn't really re- realize enough that it's a interesting schedule for the Carolina Panthers. So can't expect. I don't think anybody is, but you can't expect everything this year. And the take from Cam- Cameron Sullivan is, despite good uh, play within the division, the team just isn't. Uh, there yet, and finishes with another top three draft pick. Certainly possible. Um, yeah, the division thinks they'll have good play in the division. I mean, the Saints Saints and the Bucks, I think, are pretty beatable. I don't know if they're going to go 2-0 against anybody. The Falcons, they could go 0-2. They could split against. I think they'll split against those other teams. Uh, they got the Saints week one. I, I think the Panthers could sneak away with that one. Uh, we're getting ahead of ourselves here. But, yeah, uh, and a couple more guys here. R S no, what does that say? R S swimmer. Um, Panthers defense Presley stays af- afloat under Evero despite the loss of L- L- Lavoo and uh, yeah, Brian Burns, guys like that. Offense still one of the worst in the league, and Bryce Young is bench Randy Dalton, so he really goes bold there. Now I think they're gonna stick it out, with Bryce. I think he's only gonna come out if he's injured. Uh, I I don't I really I don't think they'll go with Dalton and try to like force anything like that. Um. But it is a little bold. But the defense part, so there's like a good bold and then there's like a bad bold, like if you're a Panthers fan there. So it's an interesting one there. Adam, uh, a Cowboys fan, can the run game improve with Brooks and better guards? I definitely think the run game will improve. I guess the question is how much or can, will Canales run the ball? It was more of like a sneaky run play caller. I love the play calling last year, but uh, I think he needs to run the ball a little bit more, if anything. Um, Will he help Young take a big leap like Baker did? We touched on that in this video. I think he could. Can the secondary stay healthy because uh, they can be great if healthy? Yeah, I kind of touched on that a little bit ago. You guys are making me think that, you know, that that's a big thing because Horn, great. But can he stay healthy? Dane Jackson, I, th- I think it could be pretty decent. And they have some safeties, obviously, that fit Evero's defense. It could be really solid. It's just got to stay healthy. Once the cornerbacks get hurt, once Horn, Horn if he gets hurt, it's it's bad. Um because the depth, they're gonna have to add some guys. Um, what can we expect from Leggett and Mingo, two receivers I like? Yeah, I still think both are a little raw. I think we'll see more Leggett. Mingo is, I think, a little bit more raw than even Leggett, even though he's in year two. Uh, just because, yeah, Ole Miss, they did some weird things with him. Um, but 
Yeah, I think Mingo's going to be Thielen's backup, like playing a slot. Leggett, I think it's going to be a lot of gadget and simple stuff right away as they try to develop uh, more. But he is pretty good contested catching on the sideline. Um, so he saw us expecting a huge jump from the offense. Defense will probably be one of the worst in the league, though. So somewhat similar to what I've been saying, but I don't think they'll be one of the worst in the league. I do think they'll take a step down. on paper, Yeah, on paper, it's... It, on paper, I understand why you say that because it's kind of Derek Brown, um, Shaq Thompson, J.C. Horn, and that's about it. But again, I said it over and over. Evro's a good defensive coach. They have guys that fit it, but we are worried about the edge and just the pass rush, the pressure, the presence of the pass rush. That's kind of what we're worried about. But I do not think they'll be the worst in the league coaching and I'm not sitting here saying Evero's like the best defensive coach. I, we, I still want to, he's still somewhat young, fairly new. He's been jumping around a little bit, but coaching is huge when it comes to defense. Like you can have a really, really bad defense on paper and have a pretty good play calling or you know, co- uh, defensive coach. Um, and they're pretty decent. They're better than expected. And you can have great players on paper, but you got this defensive coach that is stuck in his ways, like doing one thing and not a great play caller. Um, and there's little things that people don't notice, you know, kind of preparing for the game, understanding different receiver or offense, offensive looks, um, and kind of getting the play in on time, not putting a lot of pressure on the defense to kind of come up with things on the fly. Um, it's tough. It's tough because especially when offense is kind of going quicker. Uh, so it's a very tough job, tougher than people think. Um, so I don't think it'd be the one of the worst, but I guess I could see why people think that looking on paper, but it's not always about that, but we'll see. Maybe they take that much of a step down. Like I talked about early in the video, I guess it's certainly possible. That's going to wrap it up for the Carolina Panthers though. We have a playlist on the channel with all these videos. Check it out. Uh, comment which team I should do next. Check out our sponsors, liquid IV and GLD shop links pinned in the comments, uh, code goat for percentage off. It's gonna do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.